Welcome back to Ways. Almost every Nigerian talks about how the Nigerian education system is failing. Building structures are important, but empowering the Nigerian teacher is very necessary. Tonight, we're joined by Ogachuku Anene. She's a dynamic and passionate teacher with over 15 years' experience in the education sector who works with the Corona School Trust. She demystifies complex learning difficulties and believes that every child can be successful with the right kind of education. Remember, you can join the conversation, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Ways or SMS 0818384663. Thank you, Ogachuku, for joining us. Welcome to the show. Fantastic. Thank you. 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 Well done. Well done. Right, I'll just jump into it. And my question to you is we know that one of the critical issues facing the, facing the Nigerian education system is uh, the lack of advancement in curriculum, as they say. Mm -hmm. And you are an international primary curriculum coordinator, yes. and it's something you can speak to. And my question is to you, is it sustainable to continue to blend curriculum or even rely on curriculum from other countries? Like, so you have the British curriculum, some do British Nigerian. Well, what are your views on this and how, how do we actually start to, you know, develop the Nigerian curriculum or how do we even address the issues with the Nigerian curriculum? Thank you very much, Nazar. Now, the curriculum, you see, it's not a physical thing. So it's not a document that is kept somewhere. It's holistic. So it's not something that we can just address by looking at a book or putting it in a book. So looking at a curriculum, it's not going to Finland and saying, oh, they do it well, we should bring it here. Or, oh, the Americans are doing it well, so let's bring that book here. And then you think it's going to translate into reality. Curriculum is something that needs to be sat down. It has to be something that is relevant. It has to be something that is sustainable. It has to be something that can bring solutions. Okay. So we're looking at things that are practical, right. we're looking at things that are solutions to the problems we have. So looking at the design for the curriculum, we need to go to the society and begin to design curriculum that will solve problems the way they have designed this and see how we can make it relevant. So you're not just bringing things that are English, so you're not just, yes, your tailor, yes, you have needs. to tailor it to our needs in Nigeria. So we need to go to the society. So bringing a curriculum from wherever we bring it, which is what many of us do, Absolutely. and just say, oh, we're going to, um, you know, just copy it, yeah. it's yes. not working. So let me digress a bit from the curriculum, basically. Um, let's look at teacher's effectiveness, actually. Teacher's effectiveness, effectiveness is centered on training, isn't it? Now, who is mandated to um, pay for these trainings? Is it the teachers or the school owners? Well, that's a very interesting question. It's mm -hmm. always a debate that comes up in school, and then mm -hmm. you have a lot of teachers agitating the, the, the school should train us, or the government should pay for our training. Teachers' training is a collaborative effort. You cannot say that if you want to improve, it has to be someone's job to make you improve. Okay. That would be living in someone else's paradise. Exactly. You need to know that it's a collaborative effort. In the first instance, getting a job, schools have structures. That means before you came in, they already said, these are the things we want. And you had to meet up with the criteria before you came on board. So they had something they were expecting, which you had, meaning you had done some level of training before you met up with their requirements. Now, when it concerns in training, that's on, um, on the job, in, on the job training. training. Yeah. Exactly. Now we're looking at a collaborative effort because the school knows where they want to be. Mm. So a school who knows where they want to be exactly. definitely has to move the organization like an organism. Mm -hmm. So they have their plan as well as the teacher who always wants to improve on himself. Okay. So it's a collaborative effort. It cannot be resting on the okay. school alone. Okay, so no. that takes us to, uh, personally, that takes me to the issue of remuneration. Mm. Um, Nigerian teachers are poorly, poorly, poorly paid. So to say it's a collaborative effort mm -hmm. as a training 
I, I would want to say I would defer on that anyway. But now my question is, the government is always making a lot of teacher unfriendly policies. policies. Now, whose fault is it? Who, is it the society that accepts it? Or the teachers that accept it? Or the government that makes it? Why, I, the, the, I would explain the question that um, the, the teachers are the core nation builders because the future of their country is right in their hands. But a lot of people don't know that. We don't question the government when they make all these um, policies and all that, especially when it comes to remuneration. When something slash and all that, teachers are mostly unpaid four months, six months, and all that. Very true. Now, what, what I should, um, there's an entity, the um, National yeah, Union of teachers. teachers. So what are you people doing about it? Is there any decisive measure if I, I that you are taking about it? Well, yes. I want to, one, commend the Commission of Legal States yeah. because this is the first time. Interestingly, we're interested you to know that in the last um, 60 years in Nigeria, we've had about 44 Minister of Education. So it means that there has not been consistent policies. I found that out and it was really very devastating. devastating. Meaning that every three months there is a change. So and you no can't have, yes, there's no consistency, no continuity. no continuity, in fact, there's even none. Somewhere like Lagos, who in the last almost 20 years haven't had a commissioner for education. Wow. What they've had is someone doubling up as the deputy governor as well as the commissioner. Wow. So you can imagine, does that mean they're relegating education to the role of it's not important? No, I, I would like to explain that. So? Um, the deputy governor is there. There are no constitutional rules for a deputy governor. Okay. So what mostly they do when the when a new government comes in, they assign a portfolio to the deputy governor. Okay. So if you look at Sarah Social, she was a t teacher. She was put in that... Um, she was put in that portfolio, in mm -hmm. that ministry. So she was running it as a commissioner, but though she is, she was the deputy governor. So you, could, you can't really say there wasn't a commissioner. I said it doubles up. For me, I'm wondering, would you Why? double the deputy head? It's like saying, I'm looking at the vice president of Nigeria. I said, there's really no role. And then I'm going to make him, like I said, a minister yeah, of education. No. I would well, like that's to... That's what they do. Okay, well, that's what they have done. And interestingly, and that, they've tried to justify it by making sure these people, in quotes, are in the educational sector. So yeah, the so last what, one we had... What's the implication so of that? On, the implication on the, is that the policies, who is going to make these policies? So we, we're talking about policies and teacher remuneration. Right. Going back mm -hmm. to the foundational issues. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if we've had 44 for Minister of Education in Nigeria in less than six years. And of this Every 60 time. years, yeah, we're talking about two of them have spent about 13 years. So meaning, some did six months. In fact, it was a shocking news wow. for me. How are we going to make rules? How are we going to have policies? Who's going to drive these things? Now let's go back to the remuneration. Exactly. Because then I'm looking at, I'm going back to the foundation, so mm -hmm. we are seeing where the problem is from. So I started with, you said, what are we doing? So there are two questions. Why is it poor? What are we doing? I look at the current commissioner for Lagos. She's just been there a few months. But I can tell you that there's a huge difference. One, I can say, is the change in the salary structure that we have recently implemented. But this doesn't cut across uh, cut, cut across border because um, some private schools or um, private school sectors they pay according to what they make, so it's just for the public schools and not for the private schools. So do we have anything in place for uniformity of salaries uh, in um, for teachers? In? Not just for teachers. Everywhere in Nigeria, there's no uniformity. Um, when it concerns remuneration of any sort. And then more so in the educational sector, where we do not even really have a structure. Mm -hmm. So everyone can run whatever he feels you feel like running. That's, that's, so that's teachers' terrible. motivation really? and, um, uh, um, and um, salaries, how does, it, how does it correlate? Wow. Because wow. that's the basis <laughs> of the motivation in the first place. What's well, the motivation? Um, yes. Teacher salary and motivation, it has a long way to go. I'll give you my own personal experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, my phone fell into water, and it looks like I'm almost handicapped because almost all the information I need 
are in the in film. The film. So I, I can't move forward. I just feel like I can't do a lot of things. That's me mm -hmm. that has a phone. Now you can imagine someone who needs to eat and mm -hmm. then you have to pay the person 10,000 naira or okay. seven mm -hmm. or five like we find in, in the rural downtown. areas. And then that person has to eat. Yes. In quotes, my transportation. Phone, yes. Teachers are paid 5,000 naira. <laughs> yes. 7,000 naira in areas like Okoko, okay. Ajayi. Rural areas. <laughs> no, no, let's expose, say let's expose, let's, let's, say, let's, say, let's, say, let's say less exposed areas. But okay, why so are teachers constantly overlooked? Why? I don't, I don't know why that teachers been overlooked, but unfortunately, you know, this conversation, we can continue to have it till tomorrow, and this is why we keep having guests like Ogo come to tell us <laughs> about their experiences and share their perspectives. Unfortunately, exactly. we haven't got much time. But I just want to ask you one last question. So the topic today is starting and running a school business. So to someone out there who's looking to start a school business, what are your words of advice to them? Two, three words? One of the greatest things you can do right is getting the right staff. Teachers. Teachers. Teachers, staff. teachers, teachers. They are the bedrock. They are the bedrock of Absolutely. any institution. Because if the curriculum is going to be correct, it will be the teachers driving it. Absolutely, because they're the ones that Should we it. not have the right environment, the teachers are going to create a conducive environment, even under a tree. Exactly. That's so, yes, true. you should have the best of staff teachers. Well, thank you very much, Ago. It's been a very insightful session. Thank you for your time. We'll now thank go you. on a break, and Ab Abiola Adepoju will join us after the break. Abisala Adepoju.